ever noticed the bird? Does anybody know where this is by any chance? This is Brussels, Belgium, capital of the EU, right? No wastewater treatment plant until 2007, right? Europe, Europeans are not that further ahead of us. You know, they have more of a green sense of mentality. But I used to live in Turin, Torino, Italy, still no wastewater treatment plant, right? Milan, Italy, no wastewater treatment plant. You know, water is more important than probably anything else on the planet. So if we get serious, we'll treat our water properly. So I'll move into something else real quick, and I'll go back into more infrastructure stuff. But I have a question. Anybody know why a zebra has stripes? Camouflage is one, right? Does anybody know that it's air conditioning? Right? It's the most effective form of air conditioning nature's developed, the black and white stripe. It's because what happens is, is when the black and white phases, you have a temperature differential. From that temperature differential, you get pressure differential. From that, you get a vortex of wind on the height of the zebra, which causes a 9 degrees Celsius temperature drop from the ambient air to the height of the zebra. And what happens in that little bird gets free air conditioning now. <laughs> you know? So nature is symbiotic in relationships. Also, the black stripe has a thin layer of fat for insulation because it heats up more. Just like the white stripe does not have it. Nature is very effective and efficient. So how can we have cool air without air conditioning? Anybody know what that is? Termite mount, right? Well, what do termite mounds do? They stay the same temperature constantly, 24 hours a day, all year long, no matter what the outside air is. Why is that? No moving parts. It's a network of tunnels. So this is a project in Zimbabwe, eight-story apartment complex, which is actually also the first two floors are 3M's African headquarters. Um, no moving parts for air conditioning. It uses a network of tunnels and chimneys. You have to have all those chimneys. Um, utilizing fresh air flow, which I'll explain how that works here on another project. Let's take a time. Here you see the same concept being used at a, at a hospital on the equator called Las Gaviotas. This is considered the most sustainable village in the world. And I had the privilege of going there in 2005. We were the first uh, Americans allowed in over a decade. The hospital, actually, what makes this hospital even cooler is the roof retracts and allows direct sunlight to come in, and so there's no MRSA. Right? And the best antiseptic on the planet is sunlight. When you go into a hospital without sunlight, run. You know, because you're going to get a disease worse than what you came in there with. OK, it's the same air conditioning system used on a retrofitted building. It's a public school in northern Sweden. So you can see it used all across the world in different environments. Um, again, you have to have the chimneys, tunnel going through, about three feet in diameter. It doesn't have to be, but you want it to be just so a small man can get in there in case something happens, any, any trouble shooting. It also works in the winter because what's going on is you've got 54 degree temperature underground all year long. So in the winter, instead of having to heat it up from negative 40 like it does here up to 68 or 72 or whatever, you just have to heat it from 54 up. So it reduces 60% of energy needs for heating. Here you see the flow. This is what's going on. So airflow comes in. It's all about physics, right? And you use the convection. You have the black chimneys, you know, moving around here. So you mix the black and the white stripes as well in the technology when you're doing it. Uh, and also what's going on in this school in the gymnasium, I like to show this, because most of the times when you go in these gymnasiums, people get all hot and ugly and sweaty and uncomfortable. Well, the opposite happens here. The more people you have, the more airflow you get, the cooler it gets. You know? What keeps the human body comfortable is the temperature differential between our toes and our nose. Right? And right now, we try to push the air from up here. It never reaches my toes. I'm always uncomfortable I try to push more down. Instead, I need to come up like this, and that way I don't consume as much energy. <coughs> Same concepts used at a five-star hotel. Uh, you know, kings and queens and billionaires stay here, and they don't complain about their air conditioning. Right? It works. So my favorite commercial project, this is a Ford dealership, a McDonald's, and a stat oil integrated into one site. Here you see it uh, from, from here. Now we get a little closer. Here's the Ford dealership. Now you're seeing the uh, green roofs on the top, modular, so there's no waste on site. Here you're seeing the air conditioning system that used as well uh, in the building. And the chimneys got some solar collectors you know, integrated into the building. Grass Creek uh, parking lots. Um, it's very important. Instead of just getting this illusion that permeable pavement is good for us, uh, we don't want to uh, recharge our aquifers with polluted water, so the, the, the roots will collect some of those toxins from the cars before that water gets into the recharger aquifer with poison. Um, also notice on the left what's called a bioswale. You know, which, no reason to move water through pipes. Go out in nature. You're in nature, water never moves through a straight line. You know, water actually gets destroyed when you move it through a straight line. You know, water cleanses itself moving in a vortex. So 
But whenever we run it through pipes like that, we're actually keeping water dirty and unhealthy. Just a better look at that. But we'll, this is now proved to use in Indiana. Uh, air filtration systems um, built around plants and bacteria. Uh, plantair.com, if you're interested, um, with an E at the end. A uh, very successful company um, selling these now all across the world. Uh, here you see them also utilizing them in the mechanics area. Uh, it's very important that you can do that, and, and, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, toilets here, they're using 100% resource of uh, nutrient uh, human waste on site. They, they collect it and, and, and compost it and reuse it for fertilizer. But here you have 100% renewable energy to power the buildings, 100% reduction for air conditioning because of that termite mound air conditioning system you saw, reduction in heating by 60% because of that same technology, overall 60% reduction in electricity consumption for all three buildings, and 99% reuse and recycled materials to construct the whole site. Um, my favorite thing to talk about is the water side because to me water is the most important issue, and so we talk about surface water collection 100%. And if we start to reduce our, our, our use of the fresh water from the public, if we all start doing this, our tax dollars go down because we, that infrastructure issue I talked about is failing. So they're going to keep charging us more and more money to solve these problems. But if us as businesses and individuals take the responsibility to treat these things properly on site, we reduce the demand on our taxes. Right? And then we as a country can get wealthier for people. You know, we can tell the government, no, you don't need our money. You know? um, that's my Republican side. And so reuse of nutrients, again, from the toilet, 100%. And then what also happens here is the compulsory environmental training, certification, environmental aware administration. But what happened that nobody noticed in this project was by investing in this, they put their money where their mouth was, and the market reacted by making them the number one seller of flex fuel vehicles in all the Nordic countries. Right. And so by doing this, by creating a dealership like this, they now became the number one seller. And now they're moving on to Green Zone 2, which will be even more exciting than this one. Uh, this building utilized the same technologies that we went through. This is the world's largest home builder's headquarters called Daiwa House in Sendai, Japan. Um, they're probably not the home, largest home builder now because of the Fukushima incident and things like that. But at one time, they were building 52,000 houses a year. They utilized those same technologies. They built the building white, and I apologize, I don't have a picture of the roof, but there are black stripes in, put in the right place. In this case, they have a 5 degrees Celsius temperature differential on the rooftop than the ambient temperature outside. That means they don't have to cool or heat their building that much just because of using black and white stripes. In the green building movement, they always told me to use either a green roof or white roofs. Right? Well, white roofs are just reflective. Using the black and white, we actually get more flow. We're using physics to solve problems. Here you see the building. This is the Daiwa house. I'm not going to go into that because time-wise. So why are so many efforts to move society towards sustainability feeling? A lot of great ideas, a lot of smart people in the world. You know, um, but it's mainly because we continue to substitute molecules for molecules and the processes for the process. And we refuse to see that we need to substitute the systems with the systems. What do I mean by that? I'll take the case of this. It says plant bottom on it, right? So perfect. So what does that mean? That means they probably made this from a polylactic acid made out of a genetically modified corn that depletes the Oglala aquifer. But they claim it's biodegradable. So they, they play on your emotions that it's sustainable, but it's not. What does biodegradability have to do with sustainability? Nothing, right? This is GMO, you know, and, and, and you know, very, you know, not socially uh, positive and, and everything else. So it's it's only substituting the molecule for the molecule, not substituting the system for the system, right? I'd rather use the petroleum bottle. So how do we design a system? So let's move into that. Today, uh, almost every magazine you read about sustainability stuff is all pushed out. 40 to 60 percent of all of our organic food stuff is, ends up as waste, usually before it even hits our table. You know, and right now, it's just going out and escaping into usually landfills, turning into methane into greenhouse gas emissions. So we use the five kings of nature to design systems. Anybody know what the five kings of nature are? And bacteria, algae, plants, animals, and fungus. Right? How they interact in nature to create sustainability on this planet is how we should mimic our designs for our industrial systems the same to meet our basic needs. So, anybody know who says this quote? I, I'm a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. The great point is bringing the real facts in beer. <laughs> Anyone know? Abraham Lincoln. So, I agree with him. All right, let's uh, move to the next slide. So, 
All right, so this is traditional that I would, you know, I went to Harvard Business School. This is how they teach me to design a brewery, all right? Um, very linear model. Don't worry about the externalities, you know, what goes in, what comes out goes waste, you know? So CO2 usually goes in the atmosphere. The wastewater and spent hops are usually your sewage treatment plant. People go, oh, that's probably okay. Well, what happens is most sewage treatment plants are bacteria-driven, and spent hops are one of the best antibacterials out there. And so what it does is by the time sitting it there, it makes us, the taxpayer, pay more to treat our wastewater, right? So the business is not paying it. They're shifting the cost to, to us, and that's not correct. The surplus yeast and the spent grain usually goes to landfill, sometimes supplemental animal feed. That's usually what most brewers are doing now. But what they don't understand is the spent grain um, is hard for cattle to indigest or to digest. So they cause indigestion, more flatulence, more methane gas. So they're not seeing the system. They're going linearly again. And if you give spent grain to pigs or if you mix spent grain with pig waste, the hydrogen sulfide content increases tremendously. And there's a case where four people died because of it in North Carolina. All right, so you don't want to do that. You have to treat it through the systems. So how do we design a system? Every output becomes an input into something else, creating value added in job creation. So that way there is no waste throughout the chain. Right? No carbon emissions, no wastewater, no anything else. All of it becomes into something else, whether it's anaerobic digestion or algae culture, aquaculture, you know, agriculture, maybe in earthworms, potentially mycoculture. I, I grow mushrooms. I teach people. I do we'll go through pictures. I'm a big fan of that. I believe mushrooms are our future in many, many things. Mushrooms and algae. But people go, well, Brandon, I don't want to be a mushroom farmer and algae dealer or whatever, you know. Um, so I just want to sell beer. Well, I go, oh, well, it costs too much. Well, of course, upfront cost is a little more of an investment. But, but you know, as a whole, we will produce more cash than the individual businesses. It's called uh, synergism. It's a term that Mr. Fuller came up with. And so as the system goes, we'll produce more cash flow off of all of it than we would off the separate parts. You know, and so that's what we look at it. So, but again, the brewers, they